The Rheinmetall 120mm gun is a smooth-bore tank gun designed and produced by the West German Rheinmetall Detec AG company, developed in response to Soviet advances in armor technology and development of new armored threats. Production began in 1974, with the first version of the gun, known as the L-44 as it was 44 calibers long, used on the German Leopard 2 tank and soon produced under license for the American M1A1 Abrams and other tanks. The American version, the M256, uses a coil spring recoil system instead of a hydraulic system. The 120mm, 4.7 in, gun has a length of 5.28 meters, 17.3 feet, and the gun system weighs approximately 3,317 kilograms, 7,313 pounds. By 1990, the L-44 was not considered powerful enough to deal with future Soviet armor, which stimulated an effort by Rheinmetall to develop a better main armament. This first involved a 140mm, 5.5-in, tank gun named Neue Panzerkanone 140, new tank gun 140, but later turned into a compromise which led to the development of an advanced 120mm gun, the L-55 based on the same internal geometry as the L-44 and installed in the same breech and mount. The L-55 is 1.32 meters, 4.3 feet, longer, giving increased muzzle velocity to ammunition fired through it. As the L-55 retains the same barrel geometry, it can fire the same ammunition as the L-44. This gun was retrofitted into German and Dutch Leopard 2s, and chosen as the main gun of the Spanish Leopard 2E and the Greek Leopard 2 HEL. It was tested on the British Challenger 2 as a potential replacement for its current weapon, the rifled L30 120mm cannon. A variety of ammunition has been developed for use by tanks with guns based on Rheinmetall's original L-44 design. This includes a series of kinetic energy penetrators, such as the American M829 series, and high-explosive anti-tank warheads. Recent ammunition includes a range of anti-personnel rounds and demolition munitions. The Laha, developed in Israel, is a gun-launched missile which has received interest from Germany and other Leopard 2 users, and is designed to defeat both land armor and combat helicopters. The Israelis also introduced a new anti-personnel munition which limits collateral damage by controlling the fragmentation of the projectile. Background because of concerns about the inability of the 105mm, 4.1-in, L-7 tank gun then in use across NATO forces to penetrate new Soviet armor, as proved in German tests on four T-62 Soviet tanks captured by Israel following the June 1967 Six-Day War, Rheinmetall was paid for the development of a new tank gun, a project started in 1965, as the Bundeswehr felt a more powerful gun was needed for its new tanks. The first instance of a larger Soviet tank gun was witnessed on the chassis of a modified T-55 in 1961. In 1965, the Soviet Union's T-62 made its first public appearance, armed with a 115mm, 4.5-in, smoothbore tank gun. The Soviet decision to increase the power of its tank's main armament had come when, in the early 1960s, an Iranian tank commander defected over the Soviet border in a brand new M60 Patton tank, which was armed with the 105mm, 4.1-in, M68 gun, the US version of the British Royal Ordnance L7. Despite the introduction of the T-62, in 1969 their T-64 tank was rearmed with a new 125mm, 4.9-in, tank gun. While in 1972 Nizhny Tagil began production of the T-72 tank, also armed with the 125mm, 4.9-in, gun. For example, at the fighting at Sultan Yaqub, during the 1982 Lebanon War, the Israeli government claimed to have destroyed nine Syrian T-72s with the Merkava main battle tank, armed with an Israeli version of the American M68 105mm, 4.1-in, tank gun. Whether true or not, the Soviets test fired a number of Israeli M111 Hetz armor piercing discarding Sabo rounds at Kyubinka, finding the 105mm, 4.1 in, 
Round was able to perforate the sloped front section plate but not the turret armor of the T-72 tank. In response, the Soviets developed the T-72 M1. This led Israel to opt for a 120mm tank gun during the development process of the Merkava 3 main battle tank. This case is similar to the American decision to replace the M68105 mm, 4.1 in, tank gun with Rhine Metals 120 mm gun in 1976. The introduction of the T64A had raised the question within the armor community whether the new ammunition for the existing gun caliber could effectively deal with the new Soviet tank. In 1963, Germany and the United States had already embarked on a joint tank program known as the MBT-70. The new tank carried a three-man crew, with the driver in the turret, an automatic loader for the main gun, a 20mm, 0.79 in, autocannon as secondary armament, an active hydropneumatic suspension and spaced armor on the glassy plate and the front turret. The new tank concept also had improved armament, a 152mm, 6.0 in, missile launching main gun, designed to fire the MGM-51 Shalali anti-tank missile. However, the German army was interested in a tank gun which could fire conventional ammunition. Although there were attempts to modify the 152mm, 6.0 in, tank gun to do so, the process proved extremely difficult, and the Germans began development of the future Rhine metal 120mm gun instead. In 1967, the German Ministry of Defense decided to reopen a Leopard 1 improvement program, known as the Fergoldeter Leopard, Gilded Leopard, later renamed the Keeler, Wild Boar. Krauss Maffei was chosen as the contractor, and two prototypes were developed in 1969 and 1970. This program grew into the Leopard 2, the first prototype of the new tank was delivered in 1972, equipped with a 105mm, 4.1 in smoothbore main gun. Between 1972 and 1975, a total of 17 prototypes were developed. The new 120mm gun's 10-year development effort, which had begun in 1964, ended in 1974. Ten of the 17 turrets built were equipped with the 105mm smoothbore gun, and the other seven were equipped with the larger 120mm gun. Another program aimed to mount the 152mm, 6.0 in, missile gun was also developed in an attempt to save components from the MBT-70, but in 1971 the program was ended for economic reasons. Instead, the Germans opted for Rhine Metals 120mm L-44 smoothbore tank gun. Design Features Rhine Metals L-44 tank gun has a caliber of 120mm, and a length of 44 calibers, 5.28 meters, 17.3 feet. The gun's barrel weighs 1,190 kilograms, 2,620 pounds, and on the M1 Abrams the gun mount weighs 3,317 kilograms, 7,313 pounds, while the new barrel, L-55, is 55 calibers long, 1.30 meters, 4.3 feet, longer. The bore evacuator and the gun's thermal sleeve, designed to regulate the temperature of the barrel, are made of glass-reinforced plastic, while the barrel has a chrome lining to increase barrel life. Originally the gun had an EFC barrel life of 1,500 rounds, but with recent advances in propellant technology the average life has increased even further. The gun's recoil mechanism is composed of two hydraulic retarders and a hydropneumatic assembly. Rhine Metal L-44 120mm Production of the German Leopard 2 and the new 120mm tank gun began in 1979, fulfilling an order for the German army. Although the American M1 Abrams was originally armed with the M68A1 105mm gun, a version of the L7, the United States Army had planned to fit the tank with a larger main gun at a later date, and the tank's turret had been designed to accommodate a larger 120mm gun. The larger gun was integrated into the M1A1 Abrams, with the first vehicle coming off the production line in 1985 the gun, known as the M256, 
was based on the L-44 tank gun, although manufactured at Waterfleet Arsenal and modified to increase the resistance of the barrels to fracture and fatigue. Tanks armed with versions of Rhine Metals gun produced under license include Japan's Type 90 and South Korea's K1A1. The gun had made a huge turn in technological history. Rhine Metal L-55 120mm The appearance of new Soviet tanks such as the T-80B during the late 1970s and early 1980s demanded the development of new technologies and weapons to counter the threat posed to Western armor. The T-80B had increased firepower and a new composite ceramic armor. The T-72 also went through a modernization program in an attempt to bring it up to the standards of the T-80B. In 1985 the new T-72B version entered production, with a new laminate armor protection system, its turret armor, designed primarily to defeat anti-tank missiles, surpassed the T-80BS in protection. The German government began the development of the Leopard 3, although this was cancelled after the fall of the Soviet Union. On October 29, 1991, the governments of Switzerland, the Netherlands and Germany agreed to cooperate in the development of a modernization program for the Leopard 2. Part of this program included the introduction of a longer 120mm tank gun, a cheaper alternative to a brand new tank gun, increasing the maximum range of the gun by an estimated 1,500m, 1,600yd. Although the gun is longer, allowing for a higher 580 MPA, 84,122 psi, peak pressure from the propellant, the geometry remains the same, allowing the gun to fire the same ammunition as that fired from the shorter version. The longer barrel allows ammunition to attain higher velocities, for example, with new kinetic energy penetrators ammunition can reach velocities of around 1,800 m s, 5,900 feet s. The new barrel weighs 1,347 kg, 2,970 pounds. The longer tank gun has been retrofitted into the Leopard 2, creating a model known as the Leopard 2A6. Both the Spanish Leopard 2E and the Greek Leopard 2HEL, as derivatives of the Leopard 2A6, use the 55 caliber long tank gun. Ammunition A variety of rounds have been developed for Rhine Metals tank gun. For example, a long line of armor-piercing discarding SABO, APDS, rounds was developed by Rhine Metal. Originally, the Leopard 2 was outfitted with the DM-23 Kinetic Energy Penetrator, based on the Israeli M111 Hetz. The DM-23 was eventually replaced by the DM-33, which was also adopted by Japan, Italy, Netherlands, and Switzerland. The DM-33 has a three-part aluminum sabo and a two-part tungsten penetrator, and is said to be able to penetrate 560 mm in, of steel armor at a range of 2,000 m yd. The DM-43 is a further development of this round, CO developed between Germany and France. The introduction of the longer barrel came hand-in-hand hand with the introduction of a new kinetic energy penetrator, the DM-53. With the projectile including Sabo weighing in at 8.35 kg with a 38,1 length to diameter ratio and with a muzzle velocity of 1,750 m per second, 5,700 feet s, the DM-53 has an effective engagement range of up to 4,000 m, 4,400 yd. A further development, called the DM-63, improved upon the round by introducing a new temperature-independent propellant which allows the propellant to have a constant pattern of expansion between ambient temperatures inside the gun barrel from 47 degrees C, 53 degree F, to plus 71 degrees C, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. The new propellant powders, known as surface-coated double base, SCDB, propellants, allow the DM-63 to be used in many climates with consistent results. The new ammunition has been accepted into service with the Dutch and Swiss, as well as German, armies. The United States developed its own kinetic energy penetrator, KEP, tank round in the form of an armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding SABO, APFSTS, round, using a depleted uranium, DU, alloy long-rod penetrator, LRP, designated as the M829, 
followed by improved versions. An immediate improvement, known as the M829A1, was called the Silver Bullet after its good combat performance during the Gulf War against Iraqi T-55S, T-62S, and T-72 tanks. The M829 series centers around the depleted uranium penetrator, designed to penetrate enemy armor through kinetic energy and to shatter inside the turret, doing much damage within the tank. In 1998, the United States military introduced the M829A2, which has an improved depleted uranium penetrator and composite SABO pedals. In 2002, production began of the $10,000 per round M829A3 using a more efficient propellant, RPD380 stick, a lighter injection molded SABO, and a longer, 800 mm, and heavier, 10 kg 22 pounds, DU penetrator which is said to be able to defeat the latest versions of Russian Contact 5 Explosive Reactive Armor, ERA. This variant is unofficially referred to by Abrams tank crews as the Super Sabo. In response to the M829A3, the Russian army designed Relict, the most modern Russian era, which is claimed to be twice as effective as Contact 5. A further improved M829E4 round with a segmented penetrator to defeat Relict has been under development since 2011 and was to be fielded as the M829A4 in 2015. Both Germany and the United States have developed several other rounds. These include the German DM12 multi-purpose anti-tank projectile, MPAT, based on the technology in a high-explosive anti-tank, heat, warhead. However, it has been found that the DM-12S armor-killing abilities are limited by the lack of blast and fragmentation effects, and that the round is less valuable against lightly armored targets. The United States also has a MPAT-type projectile, known as the M830. This was later developed into the M830A1, which allows the M1 Abrams to use the round against helicopters. The M1 Abrams can use the M1028 canister round which is an anti-personnel-slash-anti-helicopter munition, packed with over 1,000 tungsten balls. The United States Armed Forces accepted a new demolition round, called the M908 Obstacle Defeating Round, based on the M830A1 MPAT, but with the proximity fuse replaced by a hardened nose cap. The cap allows the round to impact and embed itself in concrete, then exploding inside the target and causing more damage. The Israeli army introduced a new round known as the Laser Homing Anti-Tank, LAHA, projectile. Using a semi-active laser homing guidance method, the LAHA can be guided by the tank's crew or by teams on the ground, while the missile's trajectory can be selected to either attack from the top, to defeat enemy armor, or direct attack, to engage enemy helicopters. Furthermore, the missile can be fired by both 105mm, 4.1 in, and 120mm tank guns. The Laha has been offered as an option for the Leopard 2, and has been marketed by both Israel Military Industries and Rhine Metal to Leopard 2 users. Israeli Merc Avas make use of a round known as the APAM, which is an anti-personnel munition designed to release fragmentation at controlled intervals to limit the extent of damage. Fragments are shaped to have enough kinetic energy to penetrate body armor. Poland has introduced a series of projectiles for Rhine Metal's tank gun, including an armor-piercing penetrator target practice round, APFST's TTP, a high-explosive round, and a high-explosive target practice, HTP, projectile. The ammunition is manufactured by Zaklady Produkci Spekjelnej SPZOL. Rhine Metal 130mm gun Rhine Metal introduced a larger 130mm tank gun at Eurosatory 2016 in June 2016. Development commenced in 2015, financed entirely using internal funding, as a response to the Russian introduction of new generation armored vehicles like the T-14 Armada tank, and the first technical demonstrator, TD, was completed in May 2016. The new 130mm gun has an L-51 chrome-lined smoothbore barrel with a vertical sliding breech mechanism, increased chamber volume, no muzzle brake, a thermal sleeve, and a muzzle reference system, MRS, enabling it to be bore sighted on a more regular basis without the crew needing to leave the platform. 
Compared to the 2,700 kg 120 mm gun, the 130 mm has a 1,400 kg 3,100 pounds barrel and an all-up weight of 3,000 kg including the recoil system. Rheinmetall is developing a new generation APFSTS round featuring a semi-combustible cartridge case, new propellant, and new advanced long-rod tungsten penetrator as well as a high-explosive air-bursting munition, he ABM, based on the 120mm DM11 he ABM in parallel with the gun, the cartridges are 30 kg, 66 pounds, and 1.3 m, 4.3 feet, long that, according to the company, with the increase of 8% in caliber results in 50% more kinetic energy over the 120mm gun. Engineers believe the weapon can only be used with an automatic loader and new turret design. The gun commenced static firing trials at Rheinmetall's proving ground following Eurosatory, while engineers hope to receive a new NATO standard by the end of 2016, although development of the gun and ammunition will likely take 8-10 years. The 130mm is designed to equip the main ground combat system, MGCS, a joint effort between Germany and France to produce a successor to the Leopard 2 and Leclerc possibly to be launched between 2025 to 2030. Operators Due to tank sales, Rheinmetall's L-44 tank gun has been manufactured for other nations. For example, the Leopard 2 armed with the 44 caliber long gun, has been sold to the Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, Spain, Austria, Denmark, Finland, and other countries. Egypt had manufactured 700-800 M1A1 Abrams by 2005, and in 2008 requested permission to build another 125 tanks, their M256 main guns, the US version of the L-44, were manufactured by Watervliet Arsenal. The M1A1 has also been exported to Australia, while the M1A2 Abrams has been exported to Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. The American license-built M256 has also been offered by General Dynamics Land Systems as part of the M60-2000 main battle tank which would upgrade older M60 Patton tanks to have capabilities of their M1A1 Abrams at a reduced cost, though the company has not yet found a buyer. The Leopard 2A6 and its longer L-55 main gun have been exported for use by the Canadian Army and the Netherlands upgraded part of its original fleet of Leopard 2s with the more powerful armament. The British Army has tested Rheinmetall's longer gun, possibly looking to replace the current L30A1 120mm L-55 rifled main gun on the Challenger 2. Two Challenger 2s were modified to undergo firing trials. Although South Korean K2 Black Panther is equipped with a L-55 main gun and shows similar characteristics as its German counterpart, it is indigenously developed by Agency for Defense Development and World Industries Ace Corporation, WIA, a Korea-based powertrain company affiliated with Hyundai Kia Motors Group. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.